You know, in a world where there's nothing but negativity, I mean, let's face it right now, technology can be a little wonky and our leader is not exactly the most, uh, how does that song go? Ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. Had to do it. Had to make that joke. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this is a more positive edition of the Game Changer. I am indeed Nate the Effing Great, your Elite Ringside Network Champion, as well as the Game Changer Champion. I am being joined here by a woman who I have no problem with talking to and probably one of the few people I can tolerate. That being the one, the only, the mystical, the magical Victory Bell. How's it going? I'm good. How are you? Oh, man. Good week. Good times. Good talk with good people. I think that's the best way to sum it up. There you go. Very positive for our <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so this is basically us going through a couple of news stories that have actually been more light bringing than a lot of the other stories. Now, obviously, it's very hard to find you know specific ones because there's always going to be negatives and they're somehow going to try to overtake the positives. But we're actually going to look at, I think we have 10 stories roughly about... Yeah. Positive things that happened in the year 2017. So, let's just not waste any time. Let's just go right into it. So, I guess I take the lead. Uh, first one is about a little girl by the name of Haley Dawson. She was actually diagnosed at a young age with Poland Syndrome, which is basically a birth defect and affected her hand uh, when she was born. She actually had a 3D printer hand known as a flexi hand. She wanted a dream, since she was five, of going to every single Major League Baseball game and throwing the first pitch at every single one of those games. Well, it took her two years, and finally this year she realized her dream finally. She finally reached that goal of throwing a first pitch at every single uh, baseball game in the MLB. Honestly, this is really cool. And for me personally, I also have to deal with a lot of, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say really handicaps, but just misfortunes. Obviously, I have uh, nerve damage in my left hand. I have a rod in my leg. And I'm very limited. But for somebody like Haley to do what she did and definitely not let her, you know, her hand affect her in any way. She went out there with a positive attitude. She went out there and she realized her dream. And that's one of those things that is always good to hear for anybody, whether you're young, whether you're old, you want to achieve as many dreams as you possibly can. And obviously some people want that ultimate dream, but then there's some that want these little dreams where it's like, well, I want to do this and I want to do this. This is obviously a major dream for Paley and definitely happy for her. Paley, great job. Keep living the dream and congratulations on a great accomplishment. That is, that is I think there's very, a lot of few people that can actually say that they've actually thrown a first pitch at every MLB Major League game. Wow, that's amazing. That is really cool. And, you know, what's really cool is the support that she, I mean, to be able to do that in general, you have to get a lot of yeses. You have to get a lot of, like, sure, you can be the first pitch. Sure. Like, for her to have that support that everyone's like, yeah, we want this girl to throw the first pitch of the game. Because, you know, when you go to a baseball game, you see usually – these like celebrities or these senators or some special person in some way that you're supposed to think is famous throwing these first pitches. So the fact that this little girl with an actual inspirational story 
throws it, 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 it kind of would probably open some of the people's eyes there. So I, I think that's a great story. Yeah, and it, like like I said, it's just really cool to see that. I mean, for a little girl her age, she's already seven, and she's already accomplished that. That is just wow. amazing. I mean, when I was seven, I was, geez, I was lucky to even make it to a baseball game. And to, to, right. to even know, you know, what, what people are and really know the significance of having, you know, being a part of that first pitch. And, again, just a really good story. I am very touched by this, and it does – it, do, it does hit me hard where it counts. That's just one of those things where it's like, I feel for her. And honestly, I'm very happy for her. So definitely a lot of support. Haley Dawson, congratulations, and just keep living the dream. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, so I think that you are up next. I think you have another positive story for us. Yes, yes. And I just want to do a quick uh, disclaimer, as usual. Um, I am a very empath uh, empathetic, I almost said, empathic person, so I, um, I get emotional very easily when I, when I am t touched by somebody's story, so I apologize ahead of time if I get a little blubbery when talking, and Nate, you can definitely call me out on it, because you'll, he actually gets to see me, so <laughs> you'll be like, wow, her eyes are super watery right now, why is she crying? No. Not even... No, if, if anything, I'll be the. <laughs> but, um, but I'm just I'm throwing it out there because uh, I cry in a lot of movies and I cry in a lot of news stories and these news stories made me get emotional and that's why I chose them. Well, also um, you were a part of like the uh, the news team, so you actually have a little bit more you know, appreciation for when these stories come out, really. Yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely. I try to stay up on my news. Uh, the funny thing is, before this show, we were kind of talking about how it was a little hard to find some of these stories, because I remembered some of them, but it was hard for me to find them through all the other stories. <laughs> a lot of negativity happened this year, but you know what? It's good that we're going to focus on, you know, mostly positive. There's some negative that pops up throughout these, but it's not our fault. <laughs> no, de definitely, definitely not. Um, so my first story, and uh, like I told Nate before the show, I tried to go off by the beginning of 2017 all the way to the end. So the first story I chose was a California real estate agent, Kim Ponce Haunches Real Estate Company in Sacramento, California. She decided to pay the adoption fees for all of the pets at the Front Street Animal Shelter so that they could get a, a home by New Year's. So she would pay the adoption fees between $85 to $65 for each pet so that the, most of them or all of them could get a home by uh, the end of 2016, the beginning of 2017. And there's just this adorable cute dog in a Christmas sweater on this, so I just love this. Um, for a woman to, or a woman or anyone to pay that to an animal shelter, I just think is amazing. I remember at the news having to go to the animal shelter. And it's just, it's not the animal shelter's people's fault, but it's just kind of like a really sad place to go. Like, it's cement ground, kennel upon kennel upon kennel. It doesn't smell very well. <laughs> um, and you just wonder, like, how do these dogs, like, they don't get walked, they don't get pet. They, I mean, the people try, but there's probably two shelter people to 65 dogs. So for this woman to pay all the adoption fees so anyone could come in and, and take a pet without having to pay anything is just amazing. I was, I was floored, and I really liked it. Man, that is... That is very deep. Uh, did, did they mention if all of the pets got um, given away? They or? didn't say if all of the pets did get adopted, but they did say that, you know, it really helped us, and a lot of dogs were able to make it home by Christmas. So was, that's cute, too. That, man, <laughs> I mean. Christmas puppies. Right. <laughs> so more than likely, we're probably going to see more YouTube videos of just, you know, all these Christmas dogs just popping out of presents and all the oh, kids' I reactions. I watched those already, and then, yep. I teared up. I was like, this is so cute. Uh, not that I want a dog because I'm an auntie to four dogs. I do not need any more dogs in my life. I don't have the time or space for them, but I love dogs. So as long as I get to just walk them and watch them for a little while, I'm great. <laughs> hey, and, you know, I think that it is also really cool that she 
did that because a lot of people really get this misunderstanding that some dogs are just born bad or they say the same thing about people. The thing is, is that a lot of times when it comes to dogs, it's because of the fact that they really don't know any better half the time. It's usually they're trying to work with their environment. Sometimes they'll think that, you know, things are out to get them, things are out to hurt them, especially those that have uh, been rescued. They are just basically shattered. Their emotions are just basically everywhere. Nobody really knows the kind of torment that they've been through unless you kind of look in their eyes. So in this situation where she basically says, hey, we want these animals to have a wonderful home. We want these animals to be able to say that, hey, we have a place to live. We have a place that, you know, it's going to give us love. It's going to give us support. That's going to give us just everything that we need. That's when you start seeing the true side of these animals and they start, you know, just getting happy and they start jumping all over the place. They start just being really friendly and they'll just give you kisses. They'll give you hugs. They'll give you just, a, you watch every single dog video that you can find and there's going to be a lot more positive and a lot more emotional things about animals than there are going to be negatives. Of course, there's going to be some negatives, but again, that's because they're being surrounded by a different environment than the dogs you would usually see at a regular home. So for this woman to go out there and basically say, we want to give these dogs homes. We want to give them the luxuries that we have. Let's do it. 100% respect that. 100% just agree with that. I think, geez Louise, if that's one of the best, you know, Christmas gifts that you can give is the miracle of having giving somebody a home. I'm all for it. Oh yeah, I, I loved it. And you know, if, if shelters get too many pets, they gotta stop taking in pets, and that means not good for the animals that they have to turn away. So, yeah, again, we're we're thinking yeah. the positive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So like, I'm just happy that somebody would do that. And that's a lot of money too. <laughs> it, it really but is. It's potentially sixty times eighty five dollars. Like, <laughs> and hey, it gives the people at the shelter some time to actually clean up those kennels, so that way it doesn't smell like you know, you know. Yeah, well, <laughs> again, I don't ever blame a, a shelter for having it smell bad. I mean. Again, one dog can smell bad. We all know this. <laughs> and anyone who's a dog are like, whoa, that's the dog smell. That's the dog smell. And having 60 in a room, it's you can wash them every day, but it's not going to happen. What's your next one? All right. So this one is a very – this is probably going to hit a lot of pe people home because this is one that really I thought was very dedicated for um, – <clears throat> for for this woman to do it, but it, it starts off by saying, uh, the wife of a fallen soldier tracked down the owner of her husband's cold car to buy and give it as a gift to her son for his 16th birthday. And I read the article a little bit, and again, it just really hits home. Uh, starts off by saying, you know, Justin uh, Razier, hope I'm saying the name, I do apologize if I just butchered that, uh, Justin is the child. He barely knew his father. He knew that he was a U.S. Army lieutenant, but unfortunately, that he was uh, he was killed in 2003 when uh, Justin was only nine months old. So he never got a chance to really know who his father was. And at the time, uh, Jessica, Justin's mother, sold her husband's car, so she didn't have to keep chipping away at her savings to pay for a car that nobody was using. But in August, uh, Jessica made an appeal on Facebook to help try and find that car. So many people were given their support. They basically helped her find the car, which was a uh, 1999 Toyota uh, uh, Celica. And she gave it to her son for his uh, 15th birthday, although somehow they made it seem like it was 16th. Maybe that's a typo. Okay, it's probably a typo. Um, but yeah, what really got me was the response of the owner. He went on to say, and I quote, I think that your son will get more enjoyment out of having his dad's car than I would. So the fact of the matter that the owner was more than willing to sell that car so that it's given to her son, that shows you know the kind of 
human beings that we do have in this world. There are human beings out there that do have a kind heart. And I'm assuming that, you know, if it was somebody else, you'd be like, no, are you kidding me? This car is really good. But I think with a story like that, and just basically saying that I want to give him, I want to give my son something to remember, you know, his father by, definitely does hit home. And it's just absolutely amazing how, again, this shows the kind of human beings that we are in this world, that there can be people that are indeed bad, but then there are those who can say, you know what, I feel for you, I understand, by all means, it's, it's yours. If it, it's basically something that helps keep the memory of, you know, about your late husband and of his father, by all means, by all means, you know, it's yours. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's an awesome story. It's very cute, and it was very nice of the mom to even think of that. Like, I feel like after a while you forget that you even sold the car, but it's a very touching story. It probably means a lot to the kid who never got to meet his dad. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like like we st- stated, you know, he was nine months old when his dad passed away, so it really does suck to go through that, to basically go through basically your entire life and not know who your dad was, but to have any sort of reminder of who he was and the kind of person that he was in this world, that definitely helps a lot. It means a lot more than what a lot of people think. Some people might think, well, you just want kind of the free stuff. You just kind of want to have, you know, this so that you could say that. No, there's some people that want to have that sentimental value. I mean, for, I'll speak personally, uh, when my grandparents uh, passed away, one of the things that I had was one of my grandfather's old hats. And to me, it, it was really cool to have that because not only did I get a chance to, you know, because he had something to remind me of who my grandfather was, but um, I also got to use that same hat during a production. So it was kind of one of those things where I was feeling like I was honestly making it kind of one of those things where it was not only just a way to remember him, but also just a way for me to realize, you know, he would be here, he'd be smiling, he'd be happy, he'd be just loving the fact that, you know, I'm doing this, you know, d- doing something that I love, but also taking a piece of him along with me to basically say, Let- let's do this together. Let's just go out there and make people laugh, make people just enjoy things. And I never forget that because it's one of my favorite shows, uh, Laughter on the 23rd Floor. And I still have that hat in my closet right now, and it's still a good constant reminder that of the kind of person that he is, that was, and the kind of person that I would really love to be when I reach that age. So that that's just kind of one of those sentimental stories that I thought, you know, it's kind of cool to bring up, but also kind of is a little bit relatable. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's really cool. Really good story. It really is. So, the next story is off to you, so... Yeah, so now we're getting what those those mixed stories of... We all remember when, uh, you know, the hurricanes hit Houston, the Houston area, Hurricane Harvey. Uh, one of the first natural disasters that went over your big Red Cross donate now, which, I mean, I bet most people did. I know I did. <laughs> I was like, ah. Oh. Like after seeing all that destruction, you're like, this is real, and this is really sad. Like, people lost everything in this in this hurricane with the floods that occurred after it, too. It just expanded over miles of the Texas area, probably even into other, probably some other states. I'm not 110% sure about that. But one of the human interests and a really good story that I heard that came out of that was about a quick-thinking 13-year-old who actually was able to save 17 people during the floods by using an air mattress. And I actually got introduced to this story by just, like, a positive news just went over, and I, I got a glimpse of it, and I had to research more. And I'm so glad I remembered this story for this segment on the podcast. So Virgil Smith who he lives in Texas uh, with his mom, they took shelter on the second story floor of their neighbor's apartment during the rush because water rushed into their ground floor home and it was literally filled up to the second floor. And around 2 a.m. that night when Hurricane Harvey was hitting Dixon, Texas, where he lived, 
and again, this kid is 13, he got a text and a call from a friend requesting help because they couldn't swim, and their house was filling up, and he, he literally has a quote saying, like, man, I got to get to them right now. I got to go help my friends. So a 13-year-old thought to blow up an air mattress and use that as a lifeboat, and he went to go get his friends, and then he brought them all back. He had two sisters, a baby, the brother, the mom, the grandpa, and the stepdad, all all on the air mattress, and he took them to the second floor apartment. And then he went out two other times to save random strangers that they heard while he was floating through the water at 2 a.m. I mean, this is pitch black. There was no power. There was no nothing. And this kid went off by himself to go multiple times save people that he didn't even know. And literally, people were saying that if this is Texas, meaning there are a lot of vicious and <laughs> venomous snakes and alligators that were actually roaming these waters. And this kid and debris and like wires, loose wires that were electric, like he braved it all and just went and did this like three or four times, saving a total of 17 people. And what was cool is after the fact, once his story came out, he was able uh, to get a scholarship from from the people at, uh, that put on Wonder, the new movie Wonder, mm -hmm. about like this little kid, this boy that had a, a disease that had to not have facial recognition and bones in his face. So it's a really cute story that is going out now. It's a movie. Um, so the people that put that on wanted to recognize people of happiness and kindness that showed kindness. And so they gave him, I believe it was a 12,000 to 15,000 scholarship to start him uh, getting ready to go to college. So it was just so cute. I loved it. It was something that just makes you smile. Like, wow, this kid is a hero and he didn't even know it. <laughs> yeah. In all honesty, you know, you also mentioned, you know, some of the dangers that were out there, including, you know, alligators and venomous snakes. I have an idea on which venomous snakes you're talking about, but uh, first thing that came to mind when you said those things, I'm thinking to myself, wow, this kid is just basically a regular, everyday character from Jumanji, just going out there and just facing off against all these threats, all these dangers, just to save people that he barely even knows. Again, shows the kind of humans that we can be. And for a kid that young to basically go out there, risk everything for these people who, you know, don't even know him, he doesn't know them, that says a lot. And again, this go it actually ties into a, to a story that I had as well. And basically I entitled it, uh, Hurricanes Bring People Together. Uh, we mentioned a lot of the hurricanes that happened there. Uh, for me, hearing about uh, Harvey as well as Irma, because I had family that was in Florida when Irma hit. Uh, with Harvey, again, so many people, you met, mentioned him, there were a lot of other people that went out there and they provided, you know, kayaks and rafts and a lot of these materials to go out there and save these people. But they also provided a lot of different supplies like uh, hygiene deals, uh, cereal, food, basically everything in there. Again, showing that we can definitely make a huge difference. I'm trying to actually pull up the article really quick if I can find it. Because uh, I really want to kind of not leave anything out. Because there is a name in here that does stand out here. That's, uh, uh, okay, uh, Miguel Juarez and a couple others from the uh, T Texas Rio Grande Valley uh, created like these uh, makeshift aid stations where uh, people could pick their supplies, like of course the hygiene products and cereal, and basically getting fr free water from his truck. Uh, family near the Baker Reservoir in Houston skipped flood on an air mattress. I think that might be who you were talking about, actually. Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah just absolutely amazing. Again, wow, you know, the human spirit can definitely bring out the best in people. And with Irma, this one kind of stood out to me quite a bit for, well, one main reason, but it's again showing again that people can indeed make a difference. But one thing that definitely, 
It's kind of funny because the title of it basically says, Real Life Spider-Man Shows Up to Help in Florida After Hurricane Irma. And, uh, yeah, basically, <laughs> first thing it says, it's like, you heard that right. Spider-Man seemingly took a break from promoting his new movie and showed up in the backyards of multiple Florida residents. Uh, yeah, just basically shows Spider-Man on top of a tree with a chainsaw. And I'm just thinking to myself, that is, uh, that's a little scary, but at the same time, that is actually pretty awesome. Just, I think that it's one of those things where, A, it shows, again, that people can definitely make a difference. But then there's also some people that want to basically, you know, that, I don't know if, what exactly his story was, if maybe he was trying to be like a real life superhero, or maybe he was basically covering himself because he doesn't want that kind of you know, bad publicity that a lot of people like to twist around in certain stories where he basically says, well, he did this because, you know, he wanted to be a hero. He wanted to be, you know, something that gets all the attention. No, maybe he wanted to do it because he wanted to get his 15 minutes of fame, something like that. You know, the fact that, A, he dressed up as Spider-Man, which shows that, A, he can be completely relevant during that time, but, B, you know, maybe that he wanted to basically hide his identity, I could be wrong, uh, and basically just say, I'm not doing this for the publicity, I'm not doing this to be a hero, I'm doing this because it's the right thing to do, which, you know, for people that watch Spider-Man Homecoming, that was basically what, you know, Peter Parker would always do. He would always do these things because he knew it was the right thing to do, not for fame or for glory. I mean, yeah, he was still a kid, just like, you know, with your example, but he did it because he wanted to help others. He wanted to be somebody who could be there as, I guess, just be there to always lend a hand to help you back up whenever you fell down. Just absolutely amazing. It's this is just, again, another one of those situations where somebody dresses up as a superhero and they're basically trying to prove that real-life superheroes do exist. I love the message behind it. And if it is if it is the deeper message that I said, that's great. If it, I'm just, you know, spitballing, then, hey, that's just me. <laughs> cool, yeah. That's interesting. Definitely interesting. But, no, it's... Yeah, it's amazing that bad things that happen, such as natural disasters that we can get so many positive stories out of it, and it kind of makes everything, you know, feel a little bit better. I mean, I know I, I, I didn't experience any of these floods myself, but when you get these stories that come out and you just hear a bunch of the negative stories about, like, how many thousands of people are now out of homes and they don't have power or water or anything, and then you hear, like, a 13-year-old, though, was able to make sure 17 of those people didn't end up on the deceased list, you're like, wow. And then, you know, you follow his story and he's now getting sponsored scholarship to go to college even, which he's, you know, I'm not saying he's from a bad neighborhood. I don't know if he is, but he doesn't, I mean, he has a single mom who no matter how much you want to say, how much money she really makes, it's hard to pay for college. She has multiple kids. Like, getting one to have a full scholarship? Are you kidding me? Like, yes. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> thank you. And it's by something that he just did. That he didn't say, I'm doing this to get a scholarship. He said, I'm doing this to help people. And that's that's what we like about when people rise up above these types of things. And that was really great. So do you want me to move on to my next one? I, yes, by all means. I mean, let's, let's continue the theme of rising up against negativity with, with what happened in Vegas this, this beginning of October, October 1st, during the, you know, the radio, the radio music festival, the country concert, while Jason Aldean was on stage, like, people just started getting done down, and people were taking, you know, cover, so many people, it's the deadliest shooting that has ever occurred in the United States. And, uh, oh, geez, <laughs> I'm getting emotional. Um, I have a lot of family in Vegas. So, oh, no, I'm getting so emotional, I can't tell. Okay, I got this. Um, it's okay, it's okay, take your time. Basically, what the positives that came out of this was I got to hear from my family that they were at a blood bank, and then you got to see it on the news the amount of people that just flooded into 
the city to give for the people that were injured and hurt and needing blood, needing resources. They piled up like thousands of bottles of water for these people who lined up for blocks to give to these blood banks. So many people came to these blood banks that they were giving out notifications that we do not need any more blood. They couldn't handle the amount of blood that they were getting um, to support these people. And, you know, it's news across the country were saying, like, this is an amazing story. We cannot believe how many people are giving back because most people, most of the time when a tragedy of this magnitude, which has never happened before, happens, that is the thing they need. They're like, people are bleeding out, and if we don't get blood, if we don't get plasma, plasma, we can't help people. We can't save them. We can't go into surgery if you don't have a bunch of blood in order to help sustain the person on the table. So for them to have to turn away people because they were good is incredible. Um, so many people in Vegas came out to support their fellow, the fellow people. And the thing about Las Vegas, I mean, it's, it's a city of a mosh posh of people who are usually tourists and coming there for a reason. That's why, I mean, if you saw over the news, they had a bunch of people from Chicago who died and that people knew and it was on the news of like you know people would bring up who, who they knew that died because people go to these events in Las Vegas and they're from all over the country so it was an event that happened in Las Vegas but you know it, it had touched the whole country and to see the blood banks like fill up and having that ability to save some of the people that were just injured and not dead on the scene is just something that made me really happy. That is... Wow. I, I'm so emotional when I talk about <laughs> stuff. I'm well, sorry. <laughs> no, no, this is one of the stories where I'm literally at a loss for words because... I woke up, I woke up crying when I saw this and I'm like, I don't usually do that. Like, I, I usually, when I see a news story, like, I can get touched but, like, my phone was going off, and I was like, what the heck? What is, what is wrong? Like, what's going on? And I saw, like, in the morning, I watched the news, and I, was, I think I was late to work because I wanted to just watch the news. And I was like, this is horrible. And what sucks, too, and I know I don't want to hang on to the negative, but, like, what really sucks is they still haven't figured out why that maniac did what he did. So it's just like weird. <laughs> it's really weird. It, some people just do things because they can. Really, I, I don't know. There, there's always questions about that. And throughout this year, we've definitely seen a lot of just absolutely. Oh man, I feel like there's a lot of uh, you know unprovoked attacks, mass shootings, just mass mayhem, really. Yeah, and for the disasters too. Like, yeah. it's it's been just a really rough year. But to look at a lot of these deals, where basically you know you could definitely take you know nine eleven as a really good example was that a lot of people definitely were taken away and were taken from this world way too soon. But one thing that definitely stands true is that we always basically say you know you could try to hurt us, you can try to break our spirit, but we're going to keep coming back, and we're going to show you that, you know, yes, we feel pain, but we're not going to stop until we seek a justice and be to really commemorate those people that have definitely, you know, been taken from us too soon. And one of the best examples I had that does tie into the Las Vegas deal was uh, this story, which entitled, Illinois Man Drives from to Las Vegas and puts up homemade crosses in honor of mass shooting victims. Uh, I'm hoping I say the name right again. Uh, Greg, Greg Zanis, he didn't lose any of his family or friend there, but when he saw this, he actually, it actually, it actually did touch him. And he still felt compelled to do something special for these people that lost, you know, so much. And he made the drill from Illinois to Nevada and lined the Welcome to Las Vegas 
uh, pathway with homemade wooden crosses to honor those who lost their lives in October. And the crosses just, again, made national news, and so many family and, friend mem- family and friends of those victims have gone to those crosses and have given you know pictures and memorabilia to honor those people who are lost, which, again, shows that, yes, again, one person can make a difference, but... It effect, he affected so many people by doing this because it shows that those people will never be forgotten. And that is the most important thing for people to remember is that people may pass away, they may move on to the next, to the next uh, life, but they're never going to be forgotten because of the impact that they left in, their wor- in this world. And a lot of family and friends definitely do show that by putting up these pictures, by putting up uh, this memorabilia deal. And the fact that I believe that these they might even still be there right now shows you how m- much we can still take from this. And, you know, life can be short, but it shouldn't be this short. Why this madman decided to do this, I'll never know. I don't think anybody will ever know. But, again, prime example of you can hurt us, you can try to damage our spirit, but we're going to keep coming back, and we are going to just... You know, we're going to keep fighting the good fight until we seek justice for those that have been taken away from us. And Greg, if you're listening to this, spot on you for doing this. This was absolutely amazing. This was just absolutely phenomenal what you did. I can only imagine how many splinters you went through just to make these crosses. I'm sorry, but just, just, just a really good example of what the human spirit can really be. Yeah, yeah. What a great story. Again. You know, bad things happen, but it's it's great to listen to the good that can come out of the bad. Definitely. Um, did my turn again? I believe so. Yeah, yeah I think it is. Uh, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna turn away from all the awful things that happened a little bit. <laughs> like, oh, jeez. But um, so I, I mean, obviously, there's been a lot of talk about the NFL. In 2017, that I'm, you know, we don't have to get into, but I think a lot of people have had a lot of negative, a lot of positive, a lot of questionable things that happened in the NFL that made a lot of people either not want to watch or watching for the wrong reasons instead of enjoying the the game. It's about something else, um, and it made some people forget that the players that are that are participating in, in this game called football are actually real people. And one time that we got to see this this year was a really an emotional time for me because I was watching the game. Um, uh, the San Francisco 49ers, they got uh, Marquise Goodman scored an 83-yard touchdown during a game. It was ended up resulting in the first win, I believe, of the 49ers this season, then anyone who watches football will know that right now the 49ers and the Bears are just awful. (laughs) Um, And so what was interesting, this this guy, you know, he runs it all the way, 83-yard touchdown, amazing amount of yardage. And he, instead of doing the celebration that, you know, people have been doing, or not people, uh, the NFL players have been getting really creative with their celebrations, uh, he fell on a knee, and then he he started crying. And you're kind of like, wow, was his first touchdown that big of a deal? Like, what? Like, this is the 49ers. Like, is that is that how bad they are? They have to cry when they get a touchdown? Like, it's so amazing that they got a touchdown. And then a story comes out after the game that shows that the reason he actually was crying is because that morning his newborn baby died at 4 a.m., and he still went, he traveled, and he played the game. Um, His wife had to go into labor early, and she was either going to pass or the baby had to leave, like, the baby had to go. And, you know, they chose to try to save them both, but the baby did not make it. And so he laid still after hearing that, that his son died. And I was just, like, heartbroken. And I was like, wow. And then he got his first win, like, 
which I'm not a very religious person, but people that are, you know, was like, maybe, like, that was a little thing that he was gifted and stuff. And I was like, that's really, that's really special that he got to do something good in a time that wasn't very good for him, his team, anything, and him going out and being strong and getting some little bit of hope, I think after such a traumatic thing as your newborn baby passes like I wouldn't know the feeling but it was it was a really touching story that made a lot of people rethink why they were being so negative about the guy showing emotion and crying at, at during a football game like why is this guy crying well he's a person so I thought it was a good thing that came out of the NFL that shows that maybe we can put aside like the differences and just care for one another. Definitely. And it's always hard, no matter who you are, whether you're, you know, <clears throat> whether you've been a parent for so long or have never been a parent at all, you know kind of the pain what it's like to, to you know, to lose a child, whether they are in the prime of their life or whether they're still in the womb. It's still just very heart-wrenching. It's just... And, you know, you you just know that it's really tough. I, I can't even describe it in just mere words how emotional it can be. I just remember, uh, oh man, what was it? TV show, uh, what was it? Uh, oh, uh, Secret Life of American Teenager, that's right. There was a, a scene where uh, these two kids, they were expecting their first child and she was going into labor early. And... The baby didn't make it. It was one of the most heart-wrenching and most, I would dare say, like traumatizing episodes that I've ever witnessed on TV, ever really. And you definitely felt the emotion that they really brought in. I don't know how they were able to basically, I don't know why I say like match the emotion that regular parents would feel if they were in that scenario, but just how they were able to just acted out so well was just really it, it, it really it was one of those moments where I could compare this to like the ending of Homeward Bound where I just basically broke down crying I still do when it comes to that up that when it comes to the end of the movie and you know can you blame me but I just remember I just remember watching that one scene for I think it was maybe I think for I think it was for for a while just feeling that emotion that was there and just feeling that that pain that they were trying to deliver and basically uh, you know a lot of the, a lot of their friends they came in because they were thinking like oh we're gonna see the baby we're gonna see the baby and just see them go from like just joyful and happy to just every single bit of happy emotion just getting sucked out of their bodies in that brief moment when they find out the baby didn't make it, it just really hits home and it really makes me feel, this is what it feels like, again, to lose somebody because somebody has experienced that. They've lost somebody that they loved and that's always rough. And that kind of, it's kind of a really bad way to segue into this one, but uh, the next one I had was uh, talking about a guy by the name of Clarence from Georgia. He lost his wife about four years ago. And basically what he does is that he will eat at his table and he will actually have a picture of his wife with him at his table while he is eating. It's one of the most just, it is another emotional story. And honestly, I feel for, feel for him. I honestly just, watch this and I think to myself, this is actually one of the best tributes that you can have for a loved one. Some people might say, well, that's a little bizarre. This is one of those times where I'm just saying, shut up. This was one of those times where I'll say, let him, you know, keep that memory of his wife alive. And one thing that he said in his quote was that, ain't nobody loved one another more than me and my wife loved one another. She was always with me when we were living. She's with me now. For him to have that mindset, that basically positive mindset to where, you know, she may not be with me here physically, 
but she's always going to be with me. Again, just shows how strong human beings we can be. But you also feel for him knowing that he did lose somebody that he's loved for so long. Been married for, well, they were married for 64 years before uh, his wife passed away. That is, A, that is strong commitment. And B, that is even stronger commitment just for him to say, you know what, she's always with me and I always have this picture to remind me of that. It's, it's really amazing. Yeah, no, it's touching, touching at how much love they had for one another. So it's great. It's a great story. It really is. So, I believe you have one story left over before... Yeah, I have one last happy story that yep. I'm going to not cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to cry. Um, so, my final story that I decided to pick came from, you know, the end of November we got to see, which this touched me in a few ways just because I am also a costume designer. Uh, the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York City on um, the Today Show was able to create superhero costumes for four kids who have been battling cancer. And uh, we got to see on the Today Show their superhero creations really come to life. They got to do a photo shoot, they got their costumes, and now they got to come on the Today Show to present them. And so we had Aiden Cintron, 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 who is nine, who is uh, battling leukemia. He created Captain Cure, who is a superhero who wears a shiny blue suit and blasts magic cancer cures from his candy gun. <laughs> so oh. it's candy that cures cancer. And it's super cute. There's pictures on the Today Show website if anyone wants to go to the Today Show and look up this story. Um, then we have Malia Clark, who's five years old. Um, she created Sky Dancer. She fights crime when she's not dancing on the clouds. <laughs> oh. And she's a very, very cute little girl that has a very bright pink, almost My Little Pony type of costume. <laughs> and we have we have Kevin Miller, who is Speed Boy. He did a very nice pose, kind of takes after the Flash, and kind of looks like a Spider-Man costume, but he's really fast, and he's he's ready to take on the day and cancer. It's so cute. And then finally, they have Chloe, Chloe Mitchell, who is Super Shiner. She fights crime in the dark thanks to her golden light, and it's like a pure gold costume. And all the kids got to be dressed up like the Fashion Institute made their costumes specifically for them. And then they got to go together and be, do a professional photo shoot, which for somebody who makes costumes, and, you know, I've, I've gotten to go to a few hospitals and events where you get to talk to kids who are fighting a battle that, I couldn't even imagine fighting. Um, I think it's really cool that someone was able to give these kids the opportunity to not go and see superheroes and go meet superheroes, people costuming as superheroes, but this time they got to be create their own superhero and get their whole own costume and be the hero. So I really, I really enjoyed this. It was a touching, inspirational story and. I don't know, it's just like kind of you said before with the guy who decided to dress up as Spider-Man, like these these fancy characters that we create, you know, have some power behind them. And if it helps somebody get through their day, then I, I got to say it's something that I enjoy. Yeah, that is, that is absolutely amazing for, you know, fashion design A to... Basically, you say, we're going to hold off on all of our big projects or a lot of our big plans. Let's do something great for these kids. You know, they have been dealing with a lot in their life. Let's give them something positive to reflect on when it comes to their lives. And just, you know, all those great names. I mean, honestly, I look at this and I think to myself, wow, I kind of want one, most of these superheroes to actually be in Marvel or DC. Just <laughs> even if it's for like a brief cameo. I would honestly love to just see them doing like one of the Justice League uh, 
mo- movies or like Marvel, just like even if it's like a sporadic appearance, just to have them there, and then just basically get like a pat on the back from uh, you know from like uh, see like Wonder Woman or from Spider Man, <laughs> maybe just have them say awesome costume by the way, and just have like that kind of moment there. That would just be absolutely amazing. But yeah, just absolutely wonderful again showing the kind of people that we can be especially for those that we know are indeed struggling in their lives that we show them the compassion that they definitely do deserve and for these kids to go out on a national tv and present their ideas with such warm reactions i'm assuming just absolutely awesome loved it and honestly that (laughs) That makes my last story seem very subpar, but this is, of course, not a competition. This is just us talking about positive things when it comes to this year of 2017. Uh, this one I thought was really good because, A, it's one of those things where it's like, well, we finally got this going. And, B, it's one of those things that can definitely change the uh, game when it comes to uh, natural disasters. And that is an app that makes it... Uh, helps you know find people easier uh, basically it's called map swipe and what it does is that it helps people base basically helps finding people quickly in case of natural disasters and other crisis situations uh, basically helps them find these people I don't know if it's you know before the I think it's going to be happening before the natural disaster and when the uh, uh, what is that the when the when the crisis uh, this is one of those things where technology is doing great. This is one of those things where it does help p- kind of put people at ease to where some people are. And obviously, especially for those that are dealing with natural disasters, you know, some people might be saying, you know, well, here comes a tornado that's coming through uh, Oklahoma City. Just to be able to look on map swipe, see, you know, are they in that path? And even to even get them a call and say, hey, there's nasty weather coming your way. You know, let them know that, hey, best to, you know, take shelter, best to know that. Or even to have that situation like it was with uh, Las Vegas for them to basically, you know, have that relief that they're not in that area, but also to kind of know where they are in that situation. It's one of those things that I think to myself, well, glad that we kind of do this. And I know we kind of have something like that with, uh, I think it's like find people on iPhones or something like that. But for them to make it for that specific purpose... That's great. That's definitely great. Yeah. No, I, I love that. That's a great idea. I think Facebook also has that ability, you know, that people can check in saying they're safe. And, I mean, as much as you're like, oh, cool, when you see it sometimes, uh, if you're that person's family and you like, you actually know that person personally and you see them check in safe, like, like as I said, during the Vegas thing, a lot of my family members checked in safe. And it was just a peace of mind for me. Like, okay, I know that this is their account. I know it's only they're on their phone and they're checking in. And it's I'm glad that they're okay. Obviously, you still give them a phone call. You still are like, hey, you good. I saw that you checked in safe. It just helps people, you know, not have to worry. Or it would I would think it would help, you know, first responders be like, hey, we got this many people that checked in safe. In this apartment, there's three other people. Maybe we need to continue to search this building because there might be an, uh, there might be three people in this that aren't safe, who are stuck in a situation that they can't, they don't have their phone, they need help. So I, I would only think that that's a positive thing that you can help people out and make sure that you know we save as many people as you possibly can. Definitely. Well, I think we are just about wrapping up with this very positive but also very emotional episode of the yeah, game changer I'm <laughs> and for those that are thinking that we're not going to be doing this again next year wrong we're definitely are going to be doing this because i think that despite it definitely having a lot of stories that tugs at the heartstrings it still gives us that real good sense of relief as well as that warm feeling inside of us that says that you know hey in this world of so much negativity there is so much positiveness that can come out of this world that we live in and we're talking, and we're talking about not just small, not just medium size, you know, positivity. We're talking about huge, huge positivity in the world today. Sorry, I had to end it on that note because 
reasons. Anyway, so with that being said, uh, Victory Bell, we are just about a few weeks away from the end of the year. Any crazy plans or conventions that are coming up that you might be a part of? Um, I'm not doing any more conventions this year, but I do have a charity event on December 16th. It's going to be in Baldwin, Missouri, which is right outside of St. Louis. It's a charity event to help uh, promote the new Star Wars fan film I'm going to be featured in. Mm. And also, it's for Toys for Tots. So it's going to be half and half. People bring some toys, um, bring some donation money, and when you make a fan film, especially one of this magnitude that we're doing, we really aren't allowed to throw any money into it because it's a Disney fan film. So Disney is requiring all the actors everybody to volunteer their time in order to make a film that possibly could be used in like the new Star Wars land or something like that. So I'm partaking in that cool fan film, um, seeking a fan films that Disney has been doing for their Star Wars world. Uh, and we're just trying to do a few charity events in order to not just give back to the community, but also give back to the fans of Star Wars who want to see some of these lore stories come to life. And uh, this is definitely a story I've never heard before. Um, I can give a little like a little sense of there are characters that you know and love that are going to be brought back into this story, and it's maybe a prequel of a prequel. But mm -hmm. um, it, it's really interesting, and I think people will, will really be surprised of the quality of a film that we're we're going to be creating in the you know chicagoland area but we're we have artists and and actors that are spanning across the midwest and so we're starting our charity events in st louis and we're going to go all up from there there's probably going to be a few charity events in chicago and maybe some in michigan but we'll see where we go next but right now december 16th it's going to be in Baldwin, Missouri, again, right outside of St. Louis. I'll be posting this on my page, and that's next weekend. So I hope to see some of my St. Louis friends maybe there. If they want to come dress up as Star Wars and participate, let's do it. <laughs> Dude, I'm going to be dressing up as Star Wars even when the premiere happens next Thursday. Cheap plug, but i got to throw yeah. it out there. And you had me at Star Wars and Toys for Tots there because... <laughs> It's like two of my favorite things. Star Wars, of course, because it's one of the greatest film franchises of all time. I said one, not the greatest, just to clarify. And Toys for Tots, again, is definitely one of those great organizations where they're definitely donating a lot of their toys and a lot of their time to make sure that kids all around definitely do have a Merry Christmas because there are a lot of people, surprisingly enough, that can't afford to get their kids toys. So this is actually one of those great organizations that you definitely should you know, look into Donate whatever you can. I'll even be trying to make a donation myself coming up this week. So be sure to look out for that, you guys. Like I said, for Victory Bell. Uh, you can also look her up on her Facebook fan page, which is uh, facebook.com forward slash Victory Bell Cosplay, which is also her Instagram. And also give her a like on Twitter at Victory Clark04. Be sure to give me a like on the change, uh, change, Game Changer uh, fan page. Uh, Facebook.com forward slash changing up the game as well as on my Twitter at real F and game. So with that being said, uh, next week is going to be a very interesting week because, well, it's going to be actually a couple days, I should say, because now that I think about it, it is Saturday and usually we do these on Tuesday. Um, so for the next episode that we're going to be doing, it's going to be, it seems a little confusing, but at the same time, if you let us explain just a little bit of what we're planning, I think we'll definitely clarify some of the confusion. So basically next week what we're doing is that we're going to be picking a few actors and actresses throughout this year who have definitely really excelled this year. Now we're not saying they've been like, you know, box office smashes or anything like that, but definitely, you know, they've been at a certain bar for a while, but this year that they've gone to that next level. And there's a lot of names that I even have on my list right now. Uh, but unfortunately, one name that we definitely are not going to be including on this list is going to be Emma Watson. Sorry, guys, but she was already famous before she did Beauty and the Beast, so fortunately, Belle is not going to be a part of that one, which is really weird because, you know, of course, victory Belle, but I... <laughs> <laughs> that being said, 
Uh, we're going to wrap up this episode. So for Victory Bell, I am Nate the Effing Great. We will see you guys in just a few days, actually. So be sure to donate at Toys for Tots. Be sure to look out for Victory Bell in the St. Louis area. And, of course, guys, next week is, of course, another week of wrestling. And, actually, tomorrow will be another interesting episode with myself and Max Speedy. Because we're going to be starting a new Versus series. So definitely take a look into that. But until then, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye. Bye. I really can't stay. Baby, it's cold outside. I gotta go away. Baby, it's cold outside. This evening has been I'm hoping that you dropped so in. very nice. I'll hold your hand. That just like my mine. mother will start to beautiful. Worry. What's your my father hurry? will be pacing the floor. Listen to that fireplace so roar. Really, I'd better scurry. Beautiful, please don't well, hurry. Maybe just to have a drink more. I'll put some records on while I the pour. The neighbors might think, baby, it's bad out there. Say what's in this drink? No cabs <laughs> to be had out there. I wish I knew how. Your eyes are like starlight To now. break this spell I'll take your hat well, Your you. hair looks I swell I ought to say no, 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 Mind sir. if I move in At closer. least I'm gonna say that I oh, tried what's the sense of hurting my pride? I really can't say Baby, don't hold out Baby, Baby it's, it's cold outside, outside. Oh, You're very pushy, you know I like to think of it as opportunistic Simply must go Baby, it's cold outside The answer is no But baby, it's cold outside <laughs> The welcome has been How lucky that you so dropped in nice and warm Look out the window <laughs> At that My star My sister will be suspicious Gosh, your lips look delicious My brother will be there at the door Waves upon a tropical My shore My maintenance mind is Gosh, vicious Gosh, your lips Hard to well, maybe listen. just a cigarette more Never such a blizzard before I gotta get home Baby, you freeze out there Say, lend me your comb It's up to your knees out there You've really been grand I feel when I touch but your hand But don't you see How can you do this thing to There's me? There's bound to be a talk tomorrow Think of my life long At least there'll be plenty in play If you got pneumonia and I die. really can't stay Get over that hold up Baby, Baby it's, it's cold. cold Baby, it's cold outside Okay, fine Just another drink then <laughs> Well, I took a lot of convincing